19's F relief. 634, please, Paul, and uh, a five. Cheers, mate. Before heading out onto the streets, each of the 40 officers collect a Glock pistol and a Heckler & Koch MP5 gun. Thanks very much, mate. Thank Cheers. Number eight. Cheers, Glenn. PC Warwick back. Jones has been with F Relief okay. for three years and in that time he has seen the type of criminals carrying guns change drastically. Our worry is the age now of the people that are carrying the guns. Because it's not going to be long before someone in the department, I would imagine, shoots a 14 or a 15 year old boy and we're going to get absolutely slated. Absolutely slated. Most of the people he deals with, both suspects and victims, are black. PC Jones previously served with the army in Northern Ireland and he sees some parallels with London today. I was in Ireland when uh, the internment was around, I don't know if you remember that. And I would, I would say that the level of hatred in some parts of London for the police is the level of hatred that I experienced in Ireland. There are some people in some communities out there that absolutely hate us. Absolutely hate us. You know, and it's their sons that are getting shot, and it's their fathers that are getting shot, and all we're trying to do is help. F Relief head out to patrol London's gun hotspots. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, CO19 have dozens of cars covering London. Tonight, Inspector Gareth Rees is in charge of armed operations. Teenage gang shootings and murders occupy most of their time and are more prevalent amongst the black community in London. We do get a lot of calls to black-on-black -black shootings and sometimes incidents which are about to occur between rival gangs. Um, why they're at war with each other, I think there's a whole range of reasons, but by and large, it's young men that are involved in it, young black guys that are involved in it shooting each other. Drug dealing fuels much of the gang rivalry. If you're out there dealing drugs and you're protecting your drugs dealing with firearms and you're attacking people with firearms, there's a pretty good chance you're going to become a victim yourself. If you're swimming in that pool, then you're going to have problems. At 5 a.m., a flood of 999 calls comes in from South London. CCTV operators home in on a nightclub. People spill out onto the streets to escape from three men who have pulled out a submachine gun on the dance floor. Basically, there's been a, a really big fight involving knives. In response to this, three guys have gone off and uh, got hold of an Uzi, which is uh, a type of machine pistol, and they've, they've drawn it on the dance floor, and um, we've got no information as to whether shots have been fired yet. Uzi's Mac-10s, what well, they're called spray and pray weapons. It's crazy to pull it in a nightclub situation like that. It's just it's a recipe for disaster, it really is. Inspector Reese calls in three other F relief cars to take the gangsters on. At the nightclub, CCTV operators can now see that the three gunmen are out on the streets, still holding the submachine gun. But they soon slip out of sight. Okay, we've just had an update that uh, another guy's been seen on CCTV with a silver handgun. At the same nightclub, another man is alleged to have pulled a handgun. He's left the club in a car, but CO19 officers are right behind him, ready to swoop. We'll do what we call an option two, vehicle stop. Basically, it's a very aggressive option. It's very fast and it's very dynamic. And it leaves the person who is subject to it in absolutely no doubt. They need to do what they're told straight away. That's correct. Yeah, received. We'll wait for them. Um, obviously, if you get compromised, then we'll join you in the stop. Over. There's another train vehicle coming up. The lead car has the target vehicle in sight, but Inspector Reese must wait for backup before they take on the suspect. 
Well, we'll go Charlie, Dave, will not it? Yeah. Yeah, confirm you're happy with option two, option two. Stop struggling! Right, you're gonna get up on your feet, mate, okay? Up, come, over here, over here, over here. Let's go, let's go. Right, got any weapons on you at all, pal? No. Nothing. Mate, you're not stamped on my, on my back. No one's stamped on you at all, mate. No, you said Just hold there, shut up. Shut up! Stop struggling! Mate, we're not fucking about, are we? We've got guns out. Switch on and shut up and do your task. The reason we've been quite rough with you is because we're not going to take any chances. You didn't open the door. We didn't know that you weren't concealing a firearm in the car, OK? You understand what I've told you? Local units turn up. They'll take over, arrest the man, and begin the investigation. CO-19 officers stand back. They can't hunt for the gun. They could contaminate forensic evidence inside the car by leaving traces of their own gun residue. Einstein. We don't know where that gun is at the moment, and that's the, uh, the next part. The thing we're trying to do is, is locate that, locate that far. The silver handgun is not found. But new reports come in. The three men with the Uzi submachine gun are still on the streets. Real-time intelligence coming in from an anonymous informant to say that some of the males that were involved in it are in a Bournefield Road. F relief quickly head off. The three suspects are found lurking in a road behind the club. The men's distinctive clothing matches eyewitness descriptions from the nightclub of the Uzi gunman. One of the men also has blood splattered on his jeans. I'd have to have that Uzi off the streets, but I don't know. A fair amount of time has elapsed now. Um, they're very, very calm. Um, experienced sales me that if there was a farm in the, in the car, they would be uh, a lot more jumpy. Local officers begin to search the first suspect. What have you got to type down here? Is that? Nothing. We're going to be searching the station, so you're going to find out what it is anyway. We'll uh, yes, yes. I would rather we found it without as new. Well, you know, it feels like a yeah. cool stuff. There's nothing at all. It's because you're saying stuff, I believe, stuff down there. You're going to be hanging up to the rear. Yeah. 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 I think that was driving. That was who's put up. three guys. Is that a knife? Is that a knife? What? That's a knife, brother. That's a fucking knife. We're carrying a knife, mate. Take I asked you whether you had any weapons, guns, or knives on you, right? And you lied to me there. And you wonder why we cuff you and treat you like we do. It's got blood on it as well. All right. It's got the blood on it. Blood. To add to the bloody trousers, there's a knife with traces of blood. Two. Several mobile phones, and this is a, uh, but no Uzi submachine gun. What would you do for a living? What do you mean? Yeah. I struggle hard in the black community. Is that for the camera's benefit or for mine? You asked me a question. Oh, all right, OK. I put the right smile on the your face. The government should come up with more, more <laughs> things for the young people. Oh, now that is for the camera, isn't it, mate? <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden, you're not camera shy. I'm not camera shy. I'm camera shy. No, real talk, though. No. You want to spend some money, you want to spend some money on, like, lots no, of us jewellery. You set us up to fill. Who That's says that? Who, who, when you say use, is that not like the you boys thing? No, what the, do you mean by use? The, the Metropolitan Police. Oh, the, oh what, the police set you up to fail? Yeah, set us up to fail. Man. How do we do that? Set us up to fail. Why is that? Why? Is that? So you there's chose not, to walk not, out tonight with a knife? Well, I've been shot. You? I'm scared for my life. I've been yeah, shot. On. Sorry, mate. What name did you give me? Uh, I don't know. Don't spit. I'm going to spit. Oh, I thought he was going to spit. He's, um... What is he going to do about spitting? shooting James. <laughs> what, have you spat at me? <laughs> no, no, you just... It's wrong, it's wrong. and you're on no. camera, you'll be spitting, wouldn't you? And spitting is such a filthy thing to do. It's disgusting. It is vile, isn't it? We're not going to do guns. We're all human beings, isn't it? 
Oh, the same. I don't know. I'm a human being that doesn't Believe carry a knife. Believe you know it or I mean? not. Yeah, you carry guns and you shoot people. That's my job. Like, like you said, if I put mine in my pocket, he's going to shoot me. Why would he shoot what, me? for a knife? That's what he said. If I put mine in my pocket, he would shoot me. Why what, would he do that? It depends not? what you bring out. No, he just said, put your hand in the pocket, I'll shoot. Why would he do that? Because Is it because I'm big black and I'm going in my pocket? Oh, stop it now. Who's going to that for again? <laughs> that is outrageous. There's all sorts of rubbish coming out, different stories. I mean, he's obviously lied completely because he's got this knife that's got a bit of blood on it. So, the only thing that's a bit disappointing, we've got the guns back, but any elapse in time gives him time to get rid of him. The three men are arrested for firearms offences, possession of a knife, and violent disorder. Next, CO19 are called in to take on a gunman bent on revenge. He's lost the plot on Halloween, for want of a better word. His old habits are caught up with him. Inspector Matt Twist will be leading the operation. He has been with CO19 for over three years. In that time, there have been more than 2,000 shootings. We frequently attend shootings where people are dead on the street and it doesn't even get a couple of lines in the local paper and certainly doesn't make the news. Whereas if it happened anywhere else in, um, in the country, then it would be news. But it's a, probably a sad indictment, the fact that shootings are so commonplace in London now that it isn't newsworthy anymore. And that, I suppose, that is shocking, actually. That's the, that's the thing that shocks me more, is that it goes on and actually nobody really knows about it. En route to his briefing for the raid, an urgent call is put out on the radio. <laughs> Nearby, a gang of youths have dragged a woman out of her car. Um, an LOS BMW has just been put up as a result of a robbery. It's not strictly a firearms call, but we're the closest area car. There, there, isn't it? Yeah, he's going for it now. Go, go, guys. Go, go, go. Left hand indication. BMW Charlie Echo 5 Ford Volvo. A40 eastbound is a left left into Primula Street, which is a dead end. Can we have the helicopter and dog support? Primula Street, Acton, it's dead end. Vehicle failing to stop, MP. Uh, sorry, Indian, I'm channel, okay. Do move! Father, one's gone there. Put your arms out to the side now! Where are we now, mate? Do you know? Well, I'm with scrubs. X-ray bar of charging one. Oh, we got one detained. Yeah. Thing think it's. Oh, stinging out. It's back up by the scrubs prison. And one's over back gardens, heading away from us. The two other suspects have hopped over some garden fences. I think we've just seen the suspect again, still in the back gardens. The area is searched by local officers. Round the corner, they have scooped up the second of the three suspects. If it was ditched the top somewhere, I think, it would be, be really easy to just walk away and say, yeah, we got two. But I'd be really annoyed if there was a third still hiding in that garden there. Yeah, that's always safe. Um, especially as we know that's where he was. That is, yeah, if you want to be, have your face on TV. It's West 12, all day, day, all day. nothing okay. longer. Bang, bang. bang. Yeah. Come round our way, you show, we'll show you what time it is. Straight out west. What time? Yeah. It's uh, W12, you know yeah. what time it is. It's 10 minutes past 12, mate. <laughs> Charges against the two arrested suspects were later dropped despite the fact that they were in the victim's car. If you're a completely innocent member of the public, the first thing you know is someone's opened your door and they're sort of wrenching you out of the car by your head or pointing weapons at you, then this must be a terrifying ordeal. Yeah, we've got the victim's car back and yeah, we might have recovered the property, but the victim's gonna be living with that experience for a long time now. Inspector Twist arrives for the local CID briefing just in time. 
Our intention, as I say, this morning is to arrest Dean Miles for um, GBH and uh, various firearms offences. The suspect, Dean Miles, is a dangerous man. The actual details of that is... He has previous convictions for firearms and has served time for manslaughter. Uh, 1983, got 11 years for manslaughter. The, last... so the circumstances of that are him and another went on to a uh, traveller's site in relation to a debt where they, they were armed with a loaded shotgun but they ended up beating somebody to death. So uh, when you look around the room and you might think this is a lot of resources, uh, this man has killed somebody, previously possessed... Four weeks ago, Dean Miles' son had a fight with a local shopkeeper. What happened next is caught on the shop's CCTV camera. Um, two IC1 males, aged about 14 to 16, enter the store and start punching at the shopkeeper. And shortly after that, an IC1 who's slightly older, bald head, enters holding a handgun in his right hand. And that's our man. Peter's quite clearly to be holding some kind of black handgun. He takes the shopkeeper to one side and basically headbutts him, uh, causing quite a nasty broken nose. For tucking the gun back inside his trousers and leaving with the two youngsters. As you've seen on the CCTV there, he's lost the plot on Halloween, for want of a better word. Um, his old habits have caught up with him and he's felt so incensed, he's felt so angry, he's got that firearm and he's gone, he's gone down to the shop because they wouldn't serve his son a cigarette lighter. Fellas, as soon as you're ready, if you can form up in a car, so, uh, out on the street, we'll uh, clear the yard. Sergeant Matt Smith has spent the last 24 hours planning how they will get the suspect out of his home. I think it's fair to say that the gentleman has some anger issues. But uh, it means that if we were to deal with him, then he'd have to be controlled fairly swiftly. 15 officers from F Relief kit up. 20 local officers will help with the cordons. They will ensure no innocent members of the public walk into the line of fire. In case shots are fired, an ambulance is brought along. Let's move off, guys. OP for Trojan there. Uh, we're making our way towards you now. Here's the convoy. Uh, be aware, we will be pushing through red lights slowly. You can make sure the convoy stays together and the LAS remain at the back. If we don't catch this person, if they did escape, then what danger could he pose to other members of the public? We've seen from the CCTV how dangerous this individual can be. Um, so basically, we need, when we conduct an operation, I need to be absolutely certain that we're going to be successful. We do have people that we deal with who get stopped by armed officers all the time, are used to having guns pointed at them, and sometimes they can be far more brazen um, far, and actually provide resistance for you. You need to be in a position where you can deal with any contingency. And as a result, if the suspects see that, then they are less likely to react as if they do have a chance to escape, which they, which they don't. Lights off. Here's the convoy. No sirens and lights off. F relief quietly sneak onto the estate. They don't want to give the suspect any idea that they're coming. Yeah, we'll come up behind you, it's fine. So everyone, control, stick formed up and ready. We're going to hold until getting the nod from black. Yes, yes, Matt. Yeah, received. Martin, push forward now. Stick pushing up. A team of seven officers push forward. Two will take the door out. Two will handle the suspect, and the other three will take up firearms cover. The rest of F Relief seal off the area. Look, this is the actual premises we're going to. There. And stick is approaching the front door now. The door is taken out so the officers can get clear vision into the house. Door in. Oh, police! Occupy to number 16! We are armed police! Come to the door with your hands in blue! Show me your hands! You! Show me both your hands! Slow down, slow down, slow down! Stand still! I want to see some ID now! Stand still! You will be tasered! 
The suspect, Dean Miles, delays coming to the door. Yeah. Walk back towards me now. You want to see some ID now? Still, mate. Police officers, it'll be explained to a minute. Just who's your I don't need to show you my ID. Right. Relay movement level two, heading upstairs. What's going on, Matt? Um, basically, a suspect's not complying in the premises. Someone's running upstairs at the moment. Um, they can see them from the containment positions. Stay still. I'm not after you can see Turn around and put your hands on your head. Turn around and put your hands on your head. What they're trying to do is verbally dominate the suspects, try and gain compliance without having to use any force. Walk back towards me now. Who's got cuffs? Slow. 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 Stop. That's right, we got him. Steve, can we get him out of the door? Mate? I have no idea what you have. Come down. How's that? Are you alright by yourself, Steve? Don't fuck around! Don't fuck around! What are you doing to me? I want to knock her out, eh? Come with us. Um, hang on, just stay here. Alright. Bring him this way, fellas. Just keep him going back that way. I want to get some rigid cuffs on. The main suspect is safely out. F relief's work is done. The operation is handed back to the local CID. It's now up to them to find the gun. Premises were forced, the door went in uh, okay, with the enforcer. I'll get two cars. We had a tiny two. bit of a standoff with uh, Dad demanding CRID, and uh, I think it was effectively just trying to impress his family, to be perfectly honest with you. We've tripped one of us. The local CID begin the search. We're not going to get into a conversation when we need to rapidly dominate these people. We haven't got time or the uh, luxury of uh, speaking pleasantly. We can explain why we're there, we can explain what we're doing, and we can explain who we are. But we're not going to get into the realms of showing warrant cards when we have to maintain firearms cover. Every day, somewhere in London, CO19 carry out three armed raids on premises containing dangerous gunmen. They are forced to fire their own guns on average less than two times a year and take hundreds of firearms off the streets of London. A gun was found in Dean Miles' home. It's made safe back at the police station. It's the same size as a standard self-loading pistol, similar to the one that I'm carrying now. On close examination, it's an, it's an imitation weapon which would fire small plastic pellets. On the night, the officers have to treat this as a real gun. If this was pointed at somebody in the street or pointed at me, then you would be in fear because that looks like a real firearm. And as far as I'm concerned, it would need to be treated as real until you know it's not, because you can't take the chance. Next, F Relief raced to North London to tackle two suspected gunmen in the middle of a busy high street on a Saturday afternoon. London has been hit by a wave of teenage gang murders. And experts are warning that guns are becoming an everyday accessory for young people. Most of the victims are black. The recent shootings of three teenagers... The average age of the gunman is getting younger, and most of them are black. The cry of a community struggling to make sense of gun crime. In South London tonight... CO19's F Relief regularly run specialist operations to try and stop the wave of black-on-black -black murders and gang shootings. OK, good evening. Welcome to Heron Gate. Um, obviously, we did an operation Leon tonight. You know, basically, we're going to be going out looking for the bad guys and stopping them and uh, cause them a little bit of discomfort, hopefully. Tonight, the operation is in Tottenham, and F Relief will be taking the lead. Um, the most recent stuff we have, uh, as you can see, is um, October, it's nearly a month old, but it was quite a goodie. A man in possession of a MAC-10 plus ammunition was detained after crashing his motorcycle. We think it was going to be a drive-by shooting. Uh, the, the driver of the motorcycle had this thing strapped to his back in a rucksack, and it was open for the guy on the back of the bike to use it. 
Certainly my intentions still remain high between the Tottenham boys and the Wood Green mob. And they are looking to shoot each other for various reasons, which I'm not going to go into. The tactic behind Operation Neon is to catch armed gang members in their cars. All right, um, this beamer is well known as a pull card for the Tottenham boys. If you can sort of imprint that on your brain, but it's a silver beamer. And an X5, used by the Hackney boys uh, against Tottenham boys, so we've got a bit of cross-border stuff. Police use local intelligence officers as spotters and number plate recognition equipment to route out the gang's cars. All cars which are linked to gangs or guns will be stopped by F Relief. The convoy heads out, ready for action. Sergeant Matt Smith has worked on dozens of Operation Neons. They are excellent at reminding certain elements of uh, London's community that they're not untouchable, that they can't just drive round their little section of London ruling it uh, like there's some little king. Inspector Gareth Rees is in charge of armed operations tonight. You've got opposing forces. One is hell-bent on committing crime and causing mayhem, and obviously we're hell-bent on stopping that from happening. F Relief tuck themselves out of sight and wait for a spotter's call. It's only a matter of minutes before the radio sparks into life. Firearms, firearms, black golf, whiskey, upper hotel, firearms and gang member, a black VW golf going westbound, whiskey eight. You didn't even look, did you? It's a vehicle police information, it's uh, leaping by a gang member, so... Stop's going in. The driver is playing up. He doesn't want to be searched. Oh, you're bending my hand away. Why are you bending me up? I ain't done nothing. Oh, I ain't fucking done that. Oh, you're bending me for no we are. Bro, my hand, you're gonna break my hand, bro. Just relax your body then. Relax your body. No, you've done this about ten times. Tend to stop people. The passenger is well known to F Relief's PC carling. You're doing an operation tonight. Firearms. Who's car? PC Carling is surprised the man's friend is driving around in a brand new BMW. A small amount of drugs are found and the driver is arrested. The other gang member is let free. Word will soon spread to the gangs that armed police are on the streets so F Relief keep moving areas to ensure they're not outwitted. Over the course of the evening, they stop five cars, which have police intelligence links to firearms and gangs. At this moment, it's just a blue Peugeot that's gone through the uh, number plate reader that's flagged up with a firearms marker on it, and they're just developing the intel now. So the stop's just going in now. This is the same group that stopped earlier. I can say my faces. Yeah, so it's his girlfriend's car. So. Girlfriend's car. Have it so, yeah. On one of their final stops, a man they pulled over earlier in the evening turns up again. He's in yet another car flagged by police as being linked to gangs and guns. Certain gangs in London, they have access to what we refer to as pool cars, where there'll be nine or ten people that each get a car and they share their cars around amongst themselves and so they can be driving two or three different cars on the same day. You only have to look at the type of cars they're driving, how much they cost, and then ask them what they do for a living, and that tells you most of what you need to know. If they're driving a £60,000 car and they're on income support, what conclusions would you re reach? He doesn't work. The two men are let go. They have no guns on them. <sighs> Sometimes Operation Neons do get guns off the street, but on the whole, they serve another purpose. It sends a message that we're watching them, watching what they're doing, and that uh, they can use as many cars as they like, and they can spend as much money as they like on cars. We will keep a track of what cars they're driving around in.
but you best listen up, yeah? Hey, I break a bottle over some boy's head. Stab a broken piece into the box. I leave him in an alleyway screaming and bleeding to death. Run away not with my head off as a The hip hop scene and R and B nightclubs are often flashpoints for black on black shootings. But some musicians who grew up on London's inner city estates are taking a stand against gun and gang culture. We're losing too far, far too many lives, too many young lives um, are being lost, um, you know, to, to gun crime and stuff. When I was like 11, if I heard someone got stabbed, it was a big thing, yeah? Now, if I told my 11-year-old sister someone got stabbed, she probably knows a couple of her friends that's been in that same situation. Yeah. And it's weird, so everything's going younger and younger and younger, like... Now, I mean, 27 teenage murders in one year, Yeah. to me, seems like a bit of a record that... Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, address the problem. As grim as it sounds, bring the kids to the morgues. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Bring them to the prison. Make them meet the prisoners. Make yeah. them see the guys on a 30-year stretch. Yeah. Speak to them. I'm back next week with a lot more music than chat. That's it from me, Excalibur. Peace. The most recent official figures show the depth of the problem. Over 70% of all gun suspects in London are black, as are 50% of the victims. We just have a very small part to play because we turn up, arrest the people with guns, then move on. But it does seem that there's always people there to replace the ones we've taken away. Um, so there's always people moving up through the gang sort of hierarchy um, who are prepared still to use firearms. If you didn't have CO19, then nobody would deal with them and it would be free reign for people with guns to do whatever they like. When F Relief sign on for the day, they never know what they're going to face. Right, thin bit. Cheers. Late into a Saturday afternoon shift, they get an urgent call to North London. A member of the public has just reported that two middle-aged white men dropped a handgun in a pub while playing the fruit machine. India 99, a Met Police helicopter spots one of the suspects outside the pub. The official from 99 just confirmed uh, blue and white checked jacket, uh, elderly. Is he the one we believe to have been given the firearm? Yes, yes, 99, that's he was. Yep, uh, suspect 1 is now on his mobile phone. Yep, suspect 2 is now joined, suspect 1. Very sitting down over. Yeah, see, we'll hang close, we'll move off in. Directing the operation, hidden just round the corner, F Relief have called the landlord and ordered him to shut the pub. If he moves away from the venue, probably south, we will put a stop in on both suspects 1 and 2 for information. They're both joined each other, they are now moving towards Camden High Street, over. Yeah, received. Um, if you just update us in the location, we'll move forward to the stopping. F Relief's biggest problem is where to arrest the suspects. They will have to go in with guns drawn and don't want innocent members of the public in their way. F Relief have identified two boarded up shops as the best area to tackle the suspects. Left, 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 where you are now. The stakes couldn't be higher. They believe the suspect has the gun up his sleeve and it's ready to be used. DK hard to stop gone in on the two suspects. Not on. I saw see this on CCTV in the sense. The gun is safely removed from the suspect's sleeve. Okay, control the city line now. Both secured now. The whole operation is finished in just 30 minutes. Six times a day, CO19 draw their guns on operations like this. Three times a day, they take a gun off the street. This is a full stand down. No injuries. Neil, you can open the road, huh? On this occasion, the gun turned out to be an imitation firearm. The two men were issued with a caution.
Next, F relief target nightclubs plagued by gang shootings. Show us your hands now! Get your fucking hands up! Get down! British gammon joints from Hampshire breed pigs. Now half price. From the meeting the lead on a special operation to crack down on nightclub shootings. In the past few years, there's been up to one shooting a day at nightclubs in London over the Christmas period. Operation Argon objectives are to reduce the incidence of shootings in and around London nightclubs, to arrest and detain persons in possession of firearms, to recover firearms and to disrupt, detect and deter persons engaged in gang and gun violence. Before we all go, just a couple of... Tonight, the stakes are significantly raised. On the same operation 48 hours ago, two police officers were shot at by a gang member. This operation is to target people who think it's acceptable to carry firearms on the streets of London, and we're here to remind them that that is not acceptable and that we ain't going to tolerate it. The point that the stop goes... In charge of tonight's armed operation is F Relief Sergeant Matt Smith. Leave it to the Trojan dogs. There are headstones with police officers' names on them as a result of gang firearms. You cannot deny that fact. And what happened the other night, I think, was an incredibly lucky for the officers to still be alive. In 2007, 21 police officers were shot at by armed criminals in Britain. We need to take control of the situation because at the end of the day, we're in control, not them. You know, we're the ones with the guns and they'll do as they're told. Hopefully, if they're... If they're stopped by us in a in an aggressive manner they might have a second second think about it but you know they're they're on their own road aren't they and they'll go their own way what impact we have on them not a lot i would have said on operation argon police spotters are placed outside london's problem nightclubs while undercover officers are deployed to work on the inside. If known gang members or guns are seen, CO19 will be called in. They rendezvous in a South London car park and soon receive intelligence that four men are outside a nightclub in Brixton and a gun has been spotted. Move off. Obviously expect a lot of people there and uh, the firearm could be passed around quite quickly, so we intend to go in and put a stop in and uh, deal with anything that happens, really. Efrily for getting live updates from police spotters close to the club. Right, if 9-2 walk in from that side, the rest of us will black round to the far end. On the right, guys, on the right. By the bus stop. Stay in the car. Oh, please, gents. Show us your hands now! Get your fucking hands up! Get down! Legs out! Fucking again! Get your fucking ass behind your back! Got anything on you shouldn't have. <laughs> Boy, make a fist. Make a fist. Stand still, mate. Clear. He's been patted down. <clears throat> the men are overwhelmed and put up no resistance. Most of them are compliant because they're not in the position of dominance. They're not the one with the power. Um, and, effectively, when they're on the streets with the gun and they're the only person with the gun, then it's very easy for them to be brave. It's a slightly different story when they're confronted with trained professionals that also have guns. No guns were found on this stop, but Operation Argon was a success. For the first time in years, there were no shootings or gang murders over the Christmas period in 2007. After a lengthy investigation into the Streatham nightclub gunman, the first man stopped was innocent of any offence and released without charge. 
Is that a knife? Is that a knife? Of the three other men arrested around the corner, 19-year-old Fidel Paul pleaded guilty to firearms offences and was sentenced to four years in prison. The bloodied knife found on 20-year-old Kyron James and blood on 17-year-old Conrad Hippolyte's clothes did not come from the fight at the Stretton nightclub. On the same night, two hours before, they had carried out a triple stabbing in North London. They both pleaded guilty to violent disorder. James got a 21-month sentence. Hippolyte got 19 months. Dean Miles, the man who attacked the shopkeeper in West London, pleaded guilty to GBH and possession of an imitation firearm. He was sentenced to two years. CO19 only hit the headlines when they have shot someone dead, which is a rare occurrence. On a daily basis, they are tackling armed criminals. Let's be perfectly honest about it, we're a necessary evil. If, if I could choose, then I would live in a society where police officers don't need guns. But unfortunately, that society doesn't exist in England, certainly doesn't exist in London, and therefore we have to be in a position to respond to the threat of people with firearms. The age of gun criminals in London is falling drastically. Ten years ago, probably the higher echelons of the criminal fraternity were using firearms for specific purposes, to settle scores or to commit armed robberies. Now there's children of, sort of 14, 15, 16 using guns to settle what would have previously been fights in the playground or fights after school. Now they're being resolved using guns. It is actually quite scary. If at the age of 14 and 15 you're prepared to use guns to shoot other people, then, you know, God knows what's going to happen in the next sort of five years. Every officer has to make a split-second decision on whether to pull the trigger. Officers entering into the department are under no illusion and they're told from day one that at some stage in your service up here you will face a life or death situation and it will lead you to make a life or death decision. The stakes don't get any higher than that. Reliant on the information they receive, not every CO19 operation results in taking a gunman off the street. But most days, they are putting themselves in the line of fire. Don't worry about getting shot, because I think that I trust the people I work with implicitly, and if I miss it, they would have seen what I've missed, and I won't, won't get shot. Having said that, we'll probably go out now and I'll get shot. <laughs> mm.